Well, thank you. I'd like to address uh, the same article that one of my Democrat colleagues mentioned earlier today about an article that was published in the New York Times over the weekend addressing what's going on with some of the, uh, a segment of some of the people who have come across the border inappropriately over the last few years. Now we've gone, things have changed with the parole policy, we don't know how that's going to shake out, but we've about multiplied by 11 or 12 times the number of people coming to this country illegally since Pre President Biden took office. We've gone from about 20,000 people a month to just short of 240,000 people a month. But I'm going to address a subset of that population, and that is the young children. Approximately nine to 10,000 unaccompanied minors are coming across our border every month without either parent. What becomes of these 20,000 uh, of these, um, what becomes of this 10,000 children every month who don't have either parent with them? Well, the New York Times found out what happens to some of them. They wind up working in very dangerous working conditions. That's what happens when you let people across the border without their parents being able to look out for them. 10,000 children left across the border unaccompanied. Others, like the little girl referenced in the article in the New York Times, came here with a relative she didn't even know before this, if he really was the relative. This is something that bothers the Border Patrol. I really wish some of the Democrats would come down to the border and find out what's really going on down there. The Border Patrol and Republicans have been complaining repeatedly about all these unaccompanied minors. And in the past, when we had to separate parents from their kids for two weeks, for a month, and I believe there were a total of only 4,000 kids there, the Democrats were screaming bloody murder. How dare you separate these people from their parents for even a couple weeks? Now we have children, over 120,000 last year, separated from their parents perhaps permanently, and that's at least 120,000. The Border Patrol feels that sometimes when people are bringing children across the border, they're only pretending to be their parents, and sometimes the Border Patrol does DNR checks, and they find still more children who are being separated from their parents. We wish they had the time and the money to do DNA tests on all the parents, because I assure the New York Times the number is actually greater than that. Now, then they are spread out around the country. We would not allow that for our children, right? If somebody from this country, and, and what they do, so you understand, is the children show up at the southern border with an address. Maybe it's, maybe it's, uh, written on their shirt or something, I want to go to 123 Elm Street, Portland, Oregon, and our U.S. government will deliver them to 123 Elm Street, Portland, Oregon, even though neither parent is there, even though we haven't done thorough checks on the people who are there, we have, no, we do, we have some idea, but not enough of an idea, who these young kids are being told they have to live with. Um, Interestingly, the New York Times and my colleague on the other side of the aisle, they are concerned about the working conditions, but they mention nothing at all about the fact that these children are separated from their parents, neither parent. Isn't that something that should be a concern? I realize you're the party of Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, we condemn the nuclear family, da 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 da. But I assure you, a child is better off with its parents, better off with both its parents, and this idea that apparently it's okay to let children across the southern border, if only they have a nice job when they're 16 years old, is ridiculous. The United States not ought to be part of breaking up these families. Now, the other thing I'd like to point about that the New York Times doesn't mention at all, a lot of times kids show up at the southern border with a single parent. In this country, if there's a divorce, we do what we can to try to make sure the child has uh, some experience or contact with both parents. I'm sure the Central American countries would like it. I am told by the Border Patrol the Central American countries do not like the Biden policy of having young people come here because they feel they're losing their future. They don't want to have all their young people come to this country. I realize the Biden is all about 
you know, changing America, getting apparently as many people here as quickly as possible, from far away as possible. We don't care if the, if the parents are separated. But believe me, and I think there's a little bit of racism here maybe, believe me, in this country, we would not want one parent taking a child without the other parent signing off and moving to another country or moving to a different part of this country. But apparently, when it comes to children from Latin America, the Biden administration and the New York Times is okay with that. Please, I intend to hold the hearing on my subcommittee. Please, look out for the children at the southern border. The gentleman's time has expired.